Okay, you see these screws here? All the way up and down. That's the inside wall here of the closet. I get it on both sides. What it does is hold that wall solid, makes good solid tight corners. I did the same thing on the other side in the other room. Notice we got backing for closet stuff and our trim on the floor. Now this closet's pretty much done. But nice and solid walls. Did the same thing here. Screws in the studs. And a lot more backing. They wanted more shelves than this other closet. So as you can see that drop ceiling up there. I had to uh, avoid plumbing and power and all kinds of stuff. So yeah, that's why we like uh, metal stud framing. Okay, here's the mud I'm going to use. Easy Sand 20. I use that for pre-fill and doing the edges of the corner bead and filling out blowouts like you see up there in that corner. Uh, yeah. You end up with some blowouts like that uh, from sheetrocking. You pre-fill those so your tape will go good. Then you use all-purpose to tape on. A lot of people don't tell you, but all-purpose has adhesives in it to help glue the tape on the wall. If you try to use topping or any of that other mud, your tape might pull away from the wall. you got to use all-purpose first, and then you can use that other stuff. See how I pre-filled the blowouts and some of the bigger gaps makes the taping go on a lot easier. Uh, just use 20 minute hot mud so it sets up really fast. That way you get nice flat areas for your uh, taping to go on. Now this room is all stand up board so it'll be easy. Only butt joints I have is three of them on the ceiling. Other than that, Rest is all easy taping. Okay, for the average do-it-yourselfer, when you're taping up a butt joint like this, you want to, most guys that do this on YouTube are pros. I'm not really calling myself a pro, but I do it enough. More than the average, when you put your tape on, this folds. What I've seen guys put it on this way with a crease out. You want to put your crease in so it sucks to the wall. If you're not a professional, you'll probably have a bump there versus a, a dent. Now, I don't know if you can see, but I got it. It's starting to dent up. I'll show it to you later on after the dry tomorrow. But uh, you definitely want to put your crease in so an indentation towards the sheetrock and not a little ledge coming out. And when you do bull nose, you just want to run your sheetrock right to the edge of each stud each way because you want to leave that open or you end up with a funky looking bull nose. But with this way, you can do it. Now, a lot of guys like to fill this first, but with this plastic stuff, it don't dent, it bounces back. If you hit it with furniture or something, it'll pop back into place, so you don't need to fill the back of it. Now before I put corner bead on, this is a factory beveled edge up against the door here. And this is all just remnant pieces that were left. So you wanna pre-fill that before you put your corner bead on so it's all flat. And you go to put the corner bead on. I just used a 20 minute hot mud on that too, so it'll set up really fast. And I always like to pre fill a little bit of the joints too before I put the corner bead on so it lays nice and flat. Now, here's what I was talking about yesterday put your tape on with the crease going down, it kind of sucks it in there, so when you go to fill it, It'll fill right up, and uh, if you don't, uh, sometimes the bevel will come out, poke out, and you leave that up to the professionals. I uh, don't consider myself a professional taper, 
but I know how to get the job done. Okay, got all the taping done. Want to tape it before you put your corner bead on. A lot of people don't show you that, but you should tape it before you put the corner bead on. So you know you got your tape all the way down the edges, like that. And, you know, up here and inside corners and underneath. Now I'm getting ready to put the bulldoze on. Okay, I like to put this zip tear away or whatever you want to call it. I don't know. It's kind of like an L metal shaped. And I always like using plastic. Uh, bulldoze and corner bead because it bounces back, it doesn't stay permanent. I mean, it doesn't bend and stay bent, it always bounces back if somebody bumps it and I just staple it up there like this, tied against that tape up against that window. Okay, doing the bulldoze. You gotta measure the tie on the inside. We got four foot, half inch. So what I do with my template, see my template? This is flat on this side, and it goes to the point on both sides. It's flat point. So what I do is I draw my first one, cut it, Draw your new one, trace it that. Cut it out just like that. Just follow on your line there. And you can make your inside corners. Now, this is going to get caulked uh, before I texture too, so it'll disappear when you get done. Okay, when you come to, when you have to put two pieces of bulldoze together like this, you don't want to fuss and fight trying to get them to line up. Like, you know, it'll take you forever. So the best thing to do is take a small piece, stuff it behind there, take a lid on one side first, like this. And take your new one, and it's always nice to have the factory edges together. Put your cut edges to the end, and you can just butt right up to that. Make a perfect transition there. That'll go away. You won't even see that. All right, we like to put mesh tape along the edges of the bulldoze or corn beef, whichever, what it does is it keeps this edge from popping in the future. So if you notice some places you'll see this edge like pop away from the wall. This stuff holds it down so it don't ever want to pop away from the wall and uh, makes it a nicer job. Okay, we're stirring up some hot mud. The 20 minute stuff. I like to pre fill the corn bead or bulldoze with it first just to make sure I can come back and do it with the good stuff later. This is just a base coat to get it to stick right away so I can come and work on it in about a half an hour. I can come back with the all purpose or topping or whatever. Okay, get ready to do some texturing. Tapers on the job said the only thing this is good for is scooping mud out of the buckets. Starting to believe them. Take it all the way, scrape it up and down. Always keep your knife 
Okay, these whole orders wanted a orange peel texture. Personally, I'm not a fan of it, but when you wipe it down with the knife first, you still gotta knock down all the little blade marks and there's like little clumps that still get left behind. So you just take your sand pole I'm making shims to put this base on just have a piece of scrap backing. And carpet players love you for this. <clears throat> and you cut this so they can tuck their carpet underneath it. So I'm starting to cut out my bullnose corners. To 22 and a half so when you get done you basically have uh, your your corners all the way around to make that a 90 when you get done that'll be 90 degrees up against the wall and this this edge up against the bull nose and I just use my table saw to keep them all the same size I need 10 of them. There's a little trick on the inside corners. If you have to, you can take a piece of cardboard, shim, shove it down in there. Off there. It's gonna get caulked anyways. And then you can take your other side and bring it out flush like that before you put your nail in the corner. That makes it a nicer corner to caulk. Okay. Now if this was a wood wall, you'd need to find your studs. But being how it's metal studs, I have my layout from my uh, when I was sheetrock and still down there, now that we got backing in the floor, uh, behind the wall, it's easier just to miss the studs and you can hit randomly anywhere. So I just try to hit in between the studs now. And hold it tight. We got straight, perfect studs, metal studs. You got a nice, edge all on the top. Now if this was wood it'd be all snaking on me. But that uh, means how we're using metal studs and got back and under there. So, I see my quarter inch shims I made I put underneath there. That makes it so the carpet layers can come in and just tap under there. They'll love you for that. Instead of going tight to the floor. I don't know if you can see this or not, but there's a little bit of gapage at the top here. This is the wood frame completely out of whack, crowned out studs wall. And uh, you get gaps. You get gaps, you get waves, kind of stuff. All right, here's our finished product. This finished basement we did for these people. Got her all trimmed out. Got it all shelved out. Where I put my backing and everything for the shelves in there. Uh, we got uh, bull nose everywhere. So I told you where I put this together. You can't even tell really. This is where it was put together up there so you can't even see that in the finish uh, got the weird corners for the 22 and a half on the bull nose in the corners this room down here is this finished soffit the bull nose and everything on it everything's done just waiting for the homeowners to paint then I'll come back and 
do some finishing touches, put the doors back on, and uh, whatever punch list stuff. But uh, anyways, it's all done.